scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Declare down. What have I told you that is responsible? On what basis should I lift you? On what basis should I honor you? On what basis should your church grow? Oh, I'm a well-meaning believer. That's a lie because that's not the basis for growth. Everything you have is routed through the office of the Christ. When you dislodge him from the equation, you have no basis for receiving anything. You must plead your case, declare down. In Isaiah chapter 38, don't turn there, just write. Prophet Isaiah comes to Hezekiah and says, Hey, I bring you a word from the Lord. Set your house in order. You will not recover from this sickness. Hezekiah said, I respect you. I respect your office. You have a nice day. The Bible says he turned his face to the wall and pleaded his case. There is a judicial system in this universe and you must understand the art of spiritual legislation. You must know how to stand and plead your case in destiny otherwise you will fail you will keep complaining while you fail believe me there are many believers who allow things to just happen no there is a judicial system on what basis should i extend your life and hezekiah said remember there is a book in heaven called the book of remembrance lord is this how you reward those who diligently walk with you did you not say I have the power to choose life? Where is it in the archives of heaven that I chose death? And God said, ah, 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 this man is putting pressure on my integrity. Yes, Isaiah, go back. Forget about your ego. Go back. Even though I am the Lord that changed not, I respect and exalt myself above my word. Can I tell you this? The highest dimension of prophecy is the prophecy of scripture. That no matter what is said or not said, you can take the prophecy of scripture and stand with spiritual understanding. Please hear me. You will never get anything by default in this life. Aside from that which comes based on the law of time and chance. If you must be intentional about producing results, you must know how to plead your case. Oh God, what would you give me seeing that I go childless? All right, here is someone from my house. At least let me have a seat. And he said, no. Abraham, you will have your own child. Abraham believed God and the Bible says it was credited unto him for righteousness. And so we like faithful Abraham, we believe God. We believe God. Someone shout, I believe God. One more time, shout it, I believe God. So when you go to God, you don't pray some of these sympathetic but destructive prayers. Lord, is this how you're going to allow my life? You mean you are in heaven, you have the eyes that see and you're watching me like this. It looks, that's just, of course, God is merciful and he's loving. But let me tell you sincerely, if it's a parliament of heaven, you must know how to stand. Satan, on what basis are you attacking my family? The Bible declares that I will serve the Lord and he will bless me. I am a faithful worker in this ministry. And Lord, I stand, I lift my service like my, my badge, my authorization for safety and the blessing. This is how to plead your cause. Hallelujah. 
in one minute while you are seated i'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare everything you know the word of god has said over you don't say this is some childish thing many people have ignored this principle to the detriment of their life their success and their destiny lift your voice and please pray confession present your case before the God of the Bible very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now the fourth the fourth step is your action of obedience not just mere action your action of obedience this is the zenith of your manifesting faith your action of obedience all of those support systems build your conviction to the point where you are ready to act your action of obedience Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 let me quote it quickly for time's sake the Bible says and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do to observe and to do to observe and to do not just to see and to be aware to observe and to do all that I command you this day uh -huh, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 says and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you the condition if thou will hearken to the voice of the lord to observe and to do faith is not just what saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said are we together faith is doing what god has said joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 popular scripture joshua was a timid young man who was now receiving such responsibility he was afraid god had to encourage him to say look moses my servant is dead now the mantle is upon you you're going to lead these people onward and he was so afraid he knew they were stiff-necked people he knew that the cities that before them that were before them were very terrible and great cities and god gave him a formula that is applicable unto us the book of the law this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night to the end that thou mayest observe to do again we see that repeated observe to do all that is written therein for when you do you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success john 13 and verse 17 jesus said something very instructive while building and mentoring the disciples who would later become the apostles of the lamb is projected please let's read together ready one to read if ye know these things happy are ye if you do them it's not enough to know you must obtain grace to do grace to do the bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience only when your obedience is complete praise the name of the lord you must do you must do there are conditions behind every promise that we desire to walk into you must find out what the condition is obtain grace from god in prayer and do and do and do hallelujah two more and then we're done for this morning number five am i right the fifth key to the faith equation is found in philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 is called thanksgiving 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 is a deep and profound mystery be anxious this version says careful it's not an accurate rendition the real word there is to be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and then supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god with thanksgiving father thank you why do you thank him because you believe you believe that he has done it the Bible declares 
that when we pray this is the confidence that we have that when we pray he hears us God is not an idol when we pray he hears us so we thank him thank you Jesus because I know this project is done thank you Jesus because I received by faith this new level of grace this new level of unction thank you Jesus because I'm walking in this favor Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Can you in one minute whilst you're seated just say thank you Jesus. Not just for the things past. Not just for the things past but the things that he's bringing. Thank you Jesus. Is someone saying thank you? Don't just thank him for what you have seen. Thank you Jesus. Because the months that follow are months of favor and grace with thanksgiving keep saying thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank say thank you so in my life in my life be glorified be glorified Let me tell you this thanksgiving is truly powerful replace a life of complaining and grumbling with thanksgiving lord i may not see the things you are doing but thank you thank you because this is the day the lord has made i don't need to understand the day i just need to find out who made it if i know who made the day i can tell whether my interest was represented in that day or not the Lord, the one who so jealously loves me, made the day. So I trust that my interest was represented in this day. And I walk through the day with thanksgiving and expectation. So I'm not surprised when I'm favored. The Lord made the day. I'm not surprised when I'm lifted. The Lord made the day. I'm not surprised when doors open for me. The Lord made the day. You walk with that expectation. And continue to program very supernatural results in your life finally the last key to the faith equation is called patience Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 interestingly every time you read the Bible especially the ministry of Jesus there are times when you will see that certain miracles happen immediately the Bible says immediately these happen immediately these happen but there are times that the Bible would tell us like it happened in Mark 11 that when he caused the fig tree, he had did everything right, yet nothing happened at that instance. Yet he didn't stand there wondering and say, Father, why embarrass me this much? No, he left. He returned the next day and the tree had withered. So it is not unusual for time and process to be part of our equation of faith. The Bible says, and be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise or inherit the promise. There are times it will require patience. No matter how healthy a woman is, no matter how medically and physically sound she is, she's not going to take it in one day and the child suddenly grows in one day and within 24 hours now God can do all things are we together now but even the prophets when they come speaking by God they say according to the time of life there are things that happen according to the time of life if you give birth to a child 
and as soon as the child is out in five minutes he says mommy how are you good to see you daddy how is everything where can i eat please i'm i'm really hungry you don't know what it means to me now you are going to run away from your own blessing there are times that god allows the sequence of process to follow certain manifestations and that happens for various reasons number one because human beings usually misuse anything they are not built and educated to maintain you have to understand why many times god allows process someone who has never made a million naira never made five hundred thousand never had any significant level of the anointing no matter what kind of impartation you receive there are certain levels god will limit by himself for your own benefit there are certain levels of anointing that will never come on you just like that you can't stand the attacks that follow that anointing so out as an act of his mercy he will gradually build you into that grace so that you will sustain the stamina to both maintain it there are anointings that when you carry it will change you literally your feet your it will change you physically change your appetites change everything about you and that level of sudden change you are not even ready for it praise the lord so not every manifestation of process is demonic god is a god of speed but he does not rush people we need patience a young man who is not used to managing resources managing people will not overnight become a leader over the bible says he gave the parable of the talents he gave one five talents two talents one talent the same lord he says he gave them according to their several abilities that means he had watched them for a while he watched their belief systems he watched their level of growth and that informed how he gave them those talents at the end of that story we see that he was right the one with the five talents had his own challenge to face. His challenge would be pride and complacency. After all, I have the highest of the talents. Yet he was diligent and he engaged those talents. It, it took an extra level of focus. The one with two talents had his own challenges to fight. Jealousy and bitter envy because there was someone above him. The ability to have stayed focused and to produce. The one with the one talent, you see why he got only one. It tells you it was even just mercy that gave him that one because at the end of the story you see that the giver was right he was already a bitter person he was already a failure from beginning he said i know you you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow so i thought instead of wasting your time let me bury it you bury seeds not talents you multiply talents and you sow seeds he took a talent and he was doing what seeds should do are we blessed you need patience let me tell you this i submit to us that impatience can cheat every time you are not patient you will give birth to the ishmael that will fight you listen to this oh abraham and sarah every time you become impatient prepare Ishmael is coming that will cause you trouble for the rest of your life. You must be patient so that you will not give birth to what will become your unbecoming. There are many people today, you see, if God says I'm going to give you one million next week, Satan will give you 200 naira now, 200,000 right now. You say why wait for one million of next week? I can give you 200,000 cash. And you would think and say next week a bed in hand they say is what uh, i can't remember what that thing is what two or five in the bush no follow them who through faith is that not what satan satan is a mass you see satan is a businessman he knows how to negotiate from the instance jesus had not even started his ministry he waited patiently for the son of the living god to fast for 40 days and here he came jesus let's talk first you are hungry turn this stone into bread and he said it is written 
then he said all right i know let me take you to an exceeding high mountain you just fall down is it not written in scripture that he will put his angels charge over you they will guard you on their wings and they will insist that you don't dash your foot against a stone satan negotiating and then finally the bible says he took him into not on top into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world from that mountain that mountain was not just a physical mountain he took him into a sphere and a realm and showed him all the captains of industry business and said all these people i placed them there i'm like a godfather the keys is here with me just bow down to me why go through the rigor of the cross why are three and a half years of pain and misery preaching and doing evangelism recruiting stubborn disciples who will probably betray you tomorrow going through the cross feeding the five thousand let me save you that journey just bow to me this is what you want to collect bow to me and jesus said depart from me and he left him I can imagine what happened when he met him again in hell. Satan, three years ago we met. Now I'm with you. Give me the keys. Now I can collect the keys legally. You offered me the keys. But if I received it, there would not be blood. There would not be death. There would not be the cross. I couldn't have died as a curse. Because the mosaic, the, the, the mosaic law says that it has to be death on a tree to make you a curse. So if he died but not on a tree there's no way he would have become sin for us the bible says what is written cost is he that hanged on a tree that the blessing of abraham justification by faith will come upon us the gentiles to the end that we may receive the promise of the spirit by faith we must learn to wait nigerians we must learn to wait God is a God that can bless people, but let's be careful with our idea of sharp, sharp. Many people have been destroyed today. Do you know that when you rush, while you are suffering the consequence of rushing, someone who is following process will still come and pass you. While you are there, managing the pain of rushing can be destructive. It is a, it is a, a greater time waster. We will wait. For in his presence there's fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord. Now look up please. What has God told you from scripture? Have you meditated upon it? Have you prayed? Have you confessed it with faith in your heart? Are we together? Have you obtained grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for that manifestation? Obedience is very powerful. If yes, have you given thanks in advance knowing that God is not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent, and haven't done all, are you standing patiently waiting? Patiently waiting. Patiently waiting. All the days of my appointed time, he said, I will wait until my change comes. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my child comes until my land comes until my influence comes the bible says and john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing let me speak to someone listen to me there is always a season of appearing for anyone do you know if you force a door to open even if it's not time it will open but if that door opens it can kill you have you seen people try to pluck mango from a tree we're wrapping up when it is not time when that mango is not ripe, see the effort it takes you can stone and hit someone's car and go to police station simply because you were not patient for sometimes one more month it's difficult to pluck a fruit that is not yet ripe the effort but how many of you have mangoes around you when it is time in the night you think it's raining 
everything is coming down and you wake up in the morning to prepare blessings that's what happens when seasons come God is speaking to someone faith is not foolishness I must balance this we live in a generation that prides itself in excessive hurry and rush I need to show people that I'm the youngest millionaire. I need to show people that I'm the most vibrant man of God at 15. I need to do this. I need to buy the best car. Sometimes not every open door is anointed. You have to be discerning. When Satan wants to destroy you, sometimes he can give you visa. And off you go out of the will of God into perdition. We must sustain the maturity and the discernment to discern doors and discern opportunities. Can we pray this morning? Please rise up on your feet. We will wait for in his presence there's fullness of joy and our strength we restore as we Have just two three minutes this morning sadly i'm not sure that i may have the time to pray for people as i intended to because there are other sessions and we must respect it however please i'd like you to give me a minute or two i just feel stirred in my heart to make an altar call i believe with all my heart altar calls are not funeral services altar calls are not times when weak and unsuccessful people just come to hand over their mess to jesus no an altar call is the noblest decision that any man can make under heaven. In all your getting, the Bible declares that if our hope is only in this life, it says we are of all men most miserable. There are men and there are women here, young and old alike, whilst listening to me teach on the subject of faith. How can you believe on one who you do not know? Here's what Apostle John said. This is the record that God hath given us eternal life, he said. But he structured the administration of this life in such a way and a manner that this life only comes through his son. So it is he that hath the son that hath life. Being in church does not make you say, believe me. Being around spiritual things, being a worker, carrying a Christian name does not save you. For there is no name given unto men. If you worship the four living creatures, it's still idolatry. If you worship the throne, it's still idolatry. If you worship heaven, it's still idolatry. There is an object that represents the administration of the life of God. He is Jesus, the son of the living God. I want to make a call right now. Two sets of people all at once. Those who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me this opportunity in this conference, I want to finally win that war and stand boldly to make a decision for Jesus. Others who are saying, I love Jesus and I've worked with him, but at some point my life has gone haywire and I'm trusting for renewal. We have just one minute wherever you are. Don't wait for someone to be the first. Be bold. Win that war. Come and stand here. Let's celebrate them as they come. I'll count one to five. Run like there's fire on the mountain. One. Lord, I give you my heart. Two. Please rush. Come. Come and stand. Don't be ashamed. God bless you. Keep coming. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Look at me, my dear brothers and sisters. 
I salute you. It takes a lot of courage to come and stand before the people of God. But Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, he declares that I'll be ashamed of you before my father. It is a very noble decision to stand before Jesus. And I want you to pray this prayer. Let it be from the depth of your heart. This is not some religious thing. This is not even a conference issue. This is about your destiny with Jesus. You can find peace that surpasses all understanding. Can I tell you, no matter what has happened in your life, I do not care. No man condemns you. You're standing before the one who loves you so much. He declared, I have loved you with an everlasting love. He said, and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. God is able and willing to give you a new beginning. So as I lead you to pray, I like you to pray it passionately. You're not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Please lift your right hand high to heaven. Lift your right hand high to heaven. Say this after me. Say it from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I believe that you are the son of God. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life, Savior of my soul, King of my destiny. I receive eternal life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. The power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of the grave is broken over my life. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Your majesty, we present to you the ones you died for. It's an honor to watch this, my dear brothers and sisters, come to Jesus. For the Bible declares that whoever will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I pray that according to their declarations and according to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare the administration of eternal life to your spirit. In the name of Jesus, from today and forever, you walk victoriously. In the name of Jesus, may God find worthy vessels in your life. And I pray that you will do wonders with the life God has given you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That you be built and you be established in righteousness. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now, please, this is what I want you to do. There's a brother waving his hands there. All of you together in concert. I just want you, whilst we're appreciating them, I want you to follow that gentleman. They will lead you to a room. They'll just have a word with you and you'll be back. Can we appreciate them? Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Before I take my seat, I really want to use this opportunity to say thank you again. Um, Apostle Chidume, thank you. Your wife, thank you. And the entire church, thank you for this opportunity. And then finally, to just speak over our lives. Is that all right? I decree and declare, even though we didn't have the time to pray, God will create another opportunity for us. But I speak over your life. Everything that has defied the word of God over your life, I stand and I release my faith with you. In the name of Jesus, before the end of this month, may your eyes see signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the Spirit that God will raise men and women who will stand by you and stand for you and see to it that the purposes of God come to pass in your life even in this season. I plant in you by the Spirit hunger for spiritual things. May your prayer life come alive in Jesus' name. May your word study life come alive in Jesus' name. I take away any and all forms of distraction from your life and your destiny. And I decree and declare the grace to passionately pursue your destiny. May that grace come upon you. Hear me, everything that has refused to work in your life, I declare by the spirit of grace from tonight and after this conference, let it begin to work supernaturally. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy that you go from glory to glory. You go from grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Hello. 
Scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.